Hi, good morning everybody. So today we are going to discuss prolactin and macroprolactin and why the this discussion because we generally come uh, with certain patients like come across few females who have a higher prolactin value and they do not give any symptoms related to that high prolactin value. So we come across quite a few and then it so happens that these patients because they have high prolactin value they go through further investigations further treatment and further diagnosis so as to come across to what has exactly happened to them so first coming to what is prolactin see prolactin is a hormone that is secreted by an anterior pituitary gland and uh, it is basically has a role in lactation lactation is milk production because it has a role in lactation uh, it is called as prolactin lactation prolactin okay the lactin word comes from from its root that is called as lactation it is various other rules but this is the most important primary rule now how is it regulated it is negatively regulated there's a there's a dopamine a, a big thing that is there's dopamine that is secreted by hypothalamus it will regulate the prolactin if it increases it causes the prolactin to decrease so that is called as a negative feedback so dopamine will actually regulate the prolactin levels so if you want the prolactin levels to come low you will give dopamine or do, dopamine like things to the patient so that the prolactin levels become low and now we have got what is prolactin what is the role of prolactin and how is it regulated now if the prolactin is very high in a female the most important thing that should come into your mind or the most common diagnosis is the patient is pregnant because lactation is required it during lactation is required after the childbirth so that is where in pregnancy the prolactin levels start to increase so it is the most common diagnosis that your patient is pregnant that is a physiological increase in prolactin when such a thing happens you are not supposed to get worried but then the other thing that where the prolactin increases the patient might be on certain drugs which are causing prolactin to be increased the other important thing is thyroid under activity the major thing why a lot of female patients come to us for prolactin or come to you for prolactin test is infertility so that is the major thing major diagnosis for getting the test for prolactin done now a very small thing that is overruled by others uh, not overruled that is ignored by others is that macroprolactin also cause an increase in prolactin see if the patient is pregnant prolactin increases if the patient has certain problems in thyroid prolactin increases if he is taking certain she is taking certain drugs prolactin increase but suppose if prolactin is increased and you there is nothing if the patient is not infertile also but there is nothing which suggests why the prolactin increase people think of pituitary tumor and label the patient to be prolactinoma but it there is one more thing that is called as macroprolactin that causes an increase in prolactin see for example this paper here i have put a uh, diagrammatic representation of what is prolactin the total serum prolactin is composed of monomeric prolactin big prolactins and macro prolactins okay so monomeric prolactin is a small form of prolactin and macro prolactin is the bigger form of prolactin but the test which we all do will measure the total prolactin comprising of the big prolactin and the macro prolactin that is where the value of the prolactin increases suppose the prolactin is coming as 60 we label the patient to be hyperprolactinemia and suppose we do not get anything from that we tell the patient to go for further radiological investigations to see whether there is a pituitary tumor a prolactinoma or we have we have seen even seen patients labeled uh, as psychotic because you know in uh, psychiatric conditions prolactin has in, increased and if you if the doctor don't find any cause of prolactin increase they label the patient to be that 
so but we have to understand that there is macroprolactin which is present and which is also considered in that value of prolactin that is given as in the laboratory test but there is one test that you can do that is called as the pet test that is the polyethylene glycol treatment after that you will only get prolactin the active form of prolactin so if you if you have done if you have done a total prolactin level which is com- which is always comprising of big prolactins macro prolactins and the monomeric prolactin that is the active prolactin part and if you do the pet treatment that is polyethylene glycol treatment after that you will get only the active prolactin that is the monomeric prolactin and now why is it important because you are saving so many patients so many females from undergoing unnecessary investigations unnecessary treatment because see financial constraint is always there and a psychological impact is also also happens when the patient is unknowingly labeled to be query psychiatric disorder or query prolactinoma or query infertility also the mode of treatment changes by your only one test now see the normal prolactin ranges we take is 5 to 35 nanogram per ml in a female if it is more if it is suppose 40 also you consider it to be hyperprolactinemia but this is where you should do that screening for macro prolactins and do the pet treatment and you will get a macro prolactin you can you can see if the macro prolactin is present or not and you can save the patient from unnecessary treatment now how does it happen if you do the polyethylene glycol treatment and if you get an active prolactin of only 40 40% this means there was 60% macro prolactin which actually has no biological function in the body it's just increasing the value of prolactin and it's just misguiding the clinician misguiding the laboratory doctor misguiding the patient and this misguiding will lead to a misdiagnosis so you in the laboratory or you being a physician or you being a person who knows this about this thing can save the patient can save a life from undergoing unnecessary treatment it becomes oh it, you even if you say one percent of the patient via uh, through this polyethylene glycol treatment it will be a real help and polyethylene glycol treatment is also used in cases of macro tsh if you google you will know that there are very there are many hormones which we actually test in the laboratory and there the value that you get is actually more than act, the real value of that active part of the hormone see hormones are very hormones are very playful and smart uh, co- compounds that are present in our body they can do anything and they can change everything in the body so we have to be very careful when we are dealing with hormones this macro part can be dealt with polyethylene glycol treatment if you want to know how this polyethylene glycol treatment is done it's a very simple form it's of a me- very simple method that you can do in your own laboratory however small or however big your laboratory setup is and it will actually help your patients and help the clinicians in diagnosis and we will actually save lives by not labeling them as psychiatric proper conditions or not and making them undergo radiological investigations so prolactin is a hormone that is helpful in lactation and macro prolactin is the part of prolactin which is always die always the value will come in the test you have to remove that macro prolactin and this removal of macro prolactin is done by polyethylene glycol treatment after that what you get is only the active part of prolactin and you can give the correct value to the patient that's all for today thank you good day